Nine weeks down, three weeks to go on the marathon training plan. We have taken on an almighty challenge with this one. But we're taking off the workouts and moving in the right direction. But the question is, can we go sub two hours 30? So then, about nine weeks ago, we rather foolishly announced to you guys that we'd be taking part in the Brighton Marathon in September. And even more foolishly, we announced that we'd be going after sub two hours 30 for that marathon. Yeah, I know. I mean, for James, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge. For myself, just plain stupid. But I've gotta say, I love it. I'm really motivated for it. Mm. Anyway, we devised the training plan, which we've been trying to follow along. Uh, we've uploaded a very similar one to that in the description down below, so you can see what we're doing and uh, follow along yourself or pick little bits and pieces, one or two sessions and try them out. Don't worry, you don't actually have to be running a sub 2.30 marathon. Uh, Does that count for us as well? No, you have to be doing the sessions for 2.30 <laughs> marathon, otherwise you're not gonna get there. Yeah. Right, yeah. And if you have been following along so far, keep up the good work, well done. Yeah, now we are obviously nearing the end of that plan. We just have a few weeks remaining and we've actually really helped each other out. We've motivated one another and we've even hit some pretty hard workouts together. Right, we're out for a squad interval session. We rope well in here. Now guys, uh, I think this is probably James's second interval session in the whole, no. <laughs> How many weeks away are we from the marathon now? Four weeks? We've got, we've got a bit of a cheeky one today. Uh, I won't bore you with all of it, but going between 400s up to two, uh, 1200. Um, uh, it's kind of like a pyramid session. But yeah, two, one. On to the long one. Yeah, How are you all feeling? That's done. Oh. Like the British people are feeling hot. <laughs> yeah, right, I'm just feeling tired. <laughs> Mid-interval interview. Why are you not talking to me more? Because uh, I'm running 315 per K. Oh. It's about 15 seconds per kilometre. Quicker than it probably should be. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> We're almost finished. Last rep, 400 meters to go. How are you feeling? Wow, I'm feeling good. Hurting. Midday runs are always hard. I feel definitely yeah. my timing of food so. today is slightly wrong. I yeah. don't divulge too many details. But, uh, <laughs> it's great to uh, get out the office in the middle of the day, but uh, it really is. it's really hard to run hard. Uh, you're doing so well though. I'm uh, hanging in there. I'm uh, not exactly keeping up with Mark on every rep. But I'm close. One more to go. I'm gonna grit my teeth and get it done. Oh man. Good work, huh, mate? What do you reckon, mate? No, I'm impressed that considering how few sessions you've done. I feel like uh, that might have been a muscle memory and uh, over. Uh, over enduring. <laughs> I uh, might feel that for a couple of days. Jumping straight back into that kind of session when I've uh, missed a few sessions. Oh, blew the cobwebs out, mate. Yeah, well, that's for sure. We'll see. Uh, we'll try back this up on uh, Thursday yeah. with another solid session. And then we'll be able to give a bit more of a uh, solid update on yeah. where we're at with a month to go. Go on, man. Clean, lean protein. And then I also decided to go and run in the mountains. Now, I'm not entirely sure it was very specific marathon prep, but it was a cracking day out and good time on the feet. That counts, right? Yeah, you probably want to do that in the base phase like three months ago, but uh, it's not going to slow you down, I hope. Uh, 
Uh, talking of Sam, we have also managed to convince him to join us for Brighton Marathon and for the same pace too. I knew we could count on Sam, right? Um, now, all in all, with our training, it's going pretty well, I think. No? Yeah? Well, I've hit a lot of my key workouts, but I will be honest, I've missed a few just general runs for that overall mileage. How about yourself? i uh, be honest, I've missed more than a few. To either. Yeah, I think I probably underestimated. Uh, life is very unsettled right now for me. Having just moved here, started a new job, got three young kids. And uh, the first thing that suffered has uh, been my running. Um, I've just missed session after session after session. And uh, yeah, I'm getting more and more nervous about this race. Do you think 2.30 is still on the horizon? I think 2.30 was optimistic to begin with, having missed the sessions I've missed. Um, Probably not. In fact, I'm a little bit worried that if I go for 2.30 now, I risk a spectacular blow up mm. uh, before I get to the end. And I'd rather not have that experience. Uh, I think I'd rather go for a more realistic time and be able to hold that to the end than uh, go out way too ambitious and be walking at the end. Yeah, I think that's wise. You know, it's good you're listening to your body now because uh, it can be very easy when a couple of other people are going after a set time. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a really important point. We are trying to juggle this around day to day life, our work, family and so on and so forth. Sadly, we're not full time athletes anymore. And one thing that we've both found ourselves doing, partly for time efficiency, is running on the treadmill more. So just finished filming this show today. It's about 6 p.m. Now, rather than heading home, faffing around, putting my gear on, and ultimately just wasting a lot of time, I'm actually really lucky at the moment. We've got a treadmill in the office, so I'm going to jump straight on the treadmill, save myself a lot of time before heading home, just being more time efficient. I will be honest, I never used to do treadmill running. I just find it really boring. But I've been using Zwift quite a lot, and I've used it in the past in the lead up to a half marathon that I did quite well in. So I'm going to jump on Zwift. Keeps me motivated, keeps me honest, and also, I do the workout to the T on the treadmill. So here we go. So, apparently, this is marathon pace for us for the sub 230. It's not feeling quite as easy as I hoped. Pretty tough workout today. Almost finished. But guess who's joined me today? James. Well, it's a solid workout. I'm uh, gonna take it down a bit now. I have to say, I kind of got into my treadmill running uh, during lockdown. Even uh, as a pro, when you've got all the time in the world, it's super efficient. And once the kids came along, been able to just hop in the garage, do a solid session, and if they cried or you need, needed to lend a hand, you could hop off, help out, hop back on and finish your session. It was a lot easier than being five kilometers away on a run when your wife needed you. Um, and then of course they added running to the Zwift Pro Series. So then there was a real incentive to figure out how to run well on a treadmill. And I have to say, I really got into it. Of course, now that I'm in the UK, there's the big added benefit that I didn't really factor in so much in South Africa of avoiding the cruddy weather and getting a solid run in without layering up, doing it on Zwift rather. So Mark, I've been uh, pretty honest about how my training's gone and how unrealistic a 230 might actually prove to me. Is a 230 still realistic for you? Yeah, so I did say I've hit quite a lot of these key workouts, but the overall volume is lacking a little bit. Um, I think in reality, I probably am looking at around the 235 mark, which that pace, which is 340 per kilometer, just feels a lot more comfortable than when I try to push it to 333. I just can't see myself doing that for two and a half hours, whereas maybe can for 340 per kilometer. So I think I am slightly 
uh, readjusting my expectations there. But I am slightly hoping that the new on cloud boom echo shoes might just miraculously see me through to a 230. You well, never know. Let's hope so. Are you, you're also maybe putting yourself down a little bit. What you feel in training, you can always add a, a, a few percent on race day. There's yeah, always that added yeah. boost on race day, a little bit of adrenaline, a little bit more on the line. Yeah, and then, then you, you see me a, blow a up at 5K. Faster. Well, yeah, that's possible too, <laughs> I suppose. It's also probably a good time to point out that in any training program, you start very many weeks or months out with a sp specific goal. As you get into that last uh, little phase before the race, it's good to reflect on what you've actually done and adjust your goals a little bit. So Mark's obviously reflecting on it and going, mm, realistically a 235 is probably more realistic. I'm looking at it and going, even a 235 is probably pushing it, judging on what I've done. Uh, but that's always a good thing to do in the last few weeks before, before a race. Don't uh, stick to the, to the goal you had three months ago if your training program hasn't gone 100% perfect. Yeah, and I think also then, I I, I'm, I'll then be at the point that I might get quite a good time that'd be happy with 235 rather than blowing up spectacularly so around the 20, 30k mark and coming in in three hours plus, which is still obviously a good time, but. Yeah, as we said right in the beginning, what you should be doing is going for a realistic marathon and then the next time trying to go a bit faster and not going straight for 230 the first time. Yeah, we're yeah. taking on an almighty challenge with this one. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed following us um, in this journey. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to give us a follow and subscribe just down below.